ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start with the first question. So what type of opportunities has CGU presented you as a student that are unique compared to other institutions? And Sean, I know you're doing an interfield. I don't know if maybe you want to start us off with this question. Sure. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, so CGU is unique in, the re in this regard because I, in, compar in comparison to other programs that I was looking at, um, there are a plethora of things that CGU can offer you that um, you can take on, you could be a part of, um, such as an interfield degree. And initially when I came to CGU, I didn't even really know what that was. Um, but also there's tons of opportunities to get connected within the university. And because um, you know it is a smaller institution, the opportunities are actually greater because the network that CGU provides um, is quite large. And so getting involved with other research uh, opportunities with faculty, networking with other students um, and, and, and being kind of that tight knit class, if you will, really presents um, <clears throat> an interesting <clears throat> modular way of approaching ac academia and approaching your graduate studies. Um, but for me, it's been publishing. Um, you know, before CGU, I didn't really know a lot about publishing and what that really was um, and how to do it. And um, by meeting uh, other students and uh, talking to faculty, you learn how to publish. Um, you learn how to become a great professor, if that's your aspiration. You learn how to do research. Um, <clears throat> and you learn how to network with others to kind of see where, where you want to be. Thank you, Sean. Does anybody else want to answer that question? And I could repeat it. I'm not sure, maybe Francesco or Teo. And sure, I'll add to it, that's okay. Welcome everybody. And thank you for having me here today. So um, as Sean had mentioned, you know, the interfield uh, possibilities are uh, in an advantage of CGU. But in addition to that, I think it's the fact that you could craft your program to suit your you know, ultimate desires. Like, for example, I, I, I pursued a dual degree program, which was in two, two totally different fields doing a master's in economics and a, uh, a doctoral uh, degree in information systems. And that's the accommodation within a CGU that would allow for, for you pretty much to personalize, personalize your you know, study trajectory and um, you know, working with the coordinators and the advisors to craft a path that will allow you to achieve whatever areas, whatever strange areas of interest you may want, whatever you know, weird combinations of study you want to put together. And to pursue the program effectively, thoroughly, and you know as comprehensively as if you were doing you know distinct independent programs, if if you are, if you think you're up, up for it. So that opportunity, I don't know that you could you would get anywhere else. And uh, that was one thing that endeared me to to see to you. And I'll piggyback off of that because I'm currently pursuing the MBA from CGU and then a law degree through a partnership through Southwestern Law School. And I know for me being at CGU for this one year, it has allowed me to really look into myself and to really see what I need to do as a lawyer to have strategic business opportunities for my clients. You know, when you're in law school, you learn about the law only. You don't learn about marketing and target markets and stuff like that. So being here has really helped me to be a more well-rounded lawyer. Um, and also, it honestly has helped me to overcome my imposter syndrome, you know, because at Southwestern, you're competing against your classmates. So there's really no collaboration. But here, I'm able to really see that I grasp it and my grades reflect what I know. And I'm able to reach out to my cohort to really pick their brains to learn more. Thank you, Francesca. So this next question is just what type of support is available for students? And this could be anything from job opportunities, research assistant opportunities, or even looking at some of the different resources available, whether that's for students of color, first year students, um, you know, any students who may have children. I know if you joined some of the sessions yesterday, you probably heard about Thrive or FYE, our parent scholar club that just launched. So um, I know, Kate, you kind of have some experience. I don't know if you want to start us off and answer this question with the type of support and resources available. Yeah, um, so she mentioned Thrive and FYE, which were the first ones I was going to um, bring up. There's some wonderful programming that goes on 
there and with our Office of Student Engagement. Um, they're a really helpful resource and there's some wonderful people who work there. Um, so CGU is a very small community. So building that network is actually like a very safe and I mean, you still have to put in effort, but it's a small community who wants to network and who wants to help. Um, so reaching out to your peers and your professors and the people who work in the different offices here um, is, is definitely something that I think you get at this small institution really well. Um, what is something else I wanted to mention? Research assistants, grad assistant positions. Um, Handshake is where you'll find a lot of student employment. So if you are federal work study like myself, um, those are posted on Handshake, which you get access to after you are a student. Um, research assistant positions. I know in the School of Arts and Humanities, that is very dependent on the professors and what they need that year and if they've worked with you before. Um, I was fortunate enough to get a research assistant position um, my first year. Um, and it was because my professor said, oh, we need, we need research, we need RAs for um, our upcoming event series. Um, please apply. And I sent my stuff in. I'm like, oh, I can, I can make social media stuff. I can, I can reach out to alumni. And um, it worked out that way, which was a really wonderful experience. Um, so building that community and networking and reaching out to your professors um, is definitely, it, it, you feel that support. And I was definitely a full online student um, last year. I started in the pandemic. So it is still possible even in the online community, which is something that I was worried about going in. And I did, I thought I, maybe I should defer, but I'm like, I just want to get this done. Um, so it really is possible. Um, and then your advisor, I know in the School of Arts and Humanities, um, my advisor um, is Joshua Good and for the Museum Studies program. Um, work with your advisor, let them know your needs um, so they can help you get there. I did get internships that way. So um, communicate your needs and people are here to help you. Yeah, just continuing off of what Kate said, the staff here at CGU are really welcoming. They are willing to help you as long as you ask. Pretty much if you have any questions, they are willing to pretty much answer anything from anything basic to anything more complicated. Using Handshake, great resource, but also there's this career center that I still need to take advantage of, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, I've always pretty much from my second year on, I've always just had a job on campus here and which is helpful since I'm in the math department, I kind of need the teaching experience. And again, the staff are really welcoming. If you have any needs, if you have any specialties you need, such as again, if you have children, if you work at certain hours, if you're working part time for the most, every professor that I've met has always been willing to work with me for those things. I haven't met a professor yet that's denied anything really, which is really great about this university. I love that part so much. And we are just kind of all the campuses are right next to each other. So it's very easy to find people to connect to people to network with, which is what I really enjoy. So <laughs> yeah, for me, um, I completely agree with what Anna and uh, Kate said. It's a really small community and they really want to help you. Like you're not on your own at all. You, even if you wanna be on your own, you're not. Like There's always gonna be someone there to help you. Um, for me, I actually got my job on campus through Handshake. Like Kate mentioned, there's so many opportunities being posted on there all the time. Um, and for the DBOSS or for DBOSS, um, as far as like research goes, I'm a PhD student, so I'm a part of a lab, but we also get like, we've gotten a, quite a few actually emails about it just from like DBOSS themselves to the students. So there's honestly so many opportunities that are like, I don't even have to look for that are sent to me, which is crazy because coming from a, like a big state school, I came from Cal Poly Pomona. If anyone knows that school, it's huge. It's really close to Claremont. And you have to really look for opportunities there and like ask around and like, you have to go out of your way to kind of make a community and make connections. But at Claremont, it's really like provided to you, which is so cool. Like you don't really have to look far for opportunities. Um, and as a first student or first year student as well, it's it's been like a big transition um, going from undergrad directly to my PhD. 
And I felt super supported. And I really don't think I would have felt that way if it was a different school, just because there's so many programs here. Like, it's really just a matter of which programs you want to get involved in. Um, one I recently got involved in is the peer mentoring program, which has been like so helpful. It's so nice to have a mentor there who's already been at CGU for a while and can give me, you know, just like be someone to talk to and also help me with finding resources myself. So yes, there's really so many resources available that you don't have to even look for them yourself. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that you all are feeling supported and utilizing the different resources that are available. It's really good to hear that. So this next question, as some of you may know, as you research CGU, we are really big on transdisciplinary here. Our PhD students are required to take a transdisciplinary course. So this next question, and Teo, maybe you can start us off and answer it first. Um, how have you been able to take an interdisciplinary approach to your field of interest? So whether that's taking classes, switching majors, I know you got your master's in one degree and then your PhD in another. Oh yes, yeah. so um, CGU is big on transdisciplinary uh, disciplinary studies, and they're also big on you know explaining and you know properly articulating the idea of transdisciplinary studies. And uh, so for for me, I mean the fact that I, I I'm in a dual degree program you know emphasizes the point of transdisciplinarity because I'm you know pretty much taking full courses um, going in depth into two areas. So my, my understanding of transdisciplinary from the CG perspective is the idea that you're, 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 not, uh, you're not demoting or diminishing any area. You're, you're allowing multiple areas or multiple areas of studies to, to intersect and uh, interact at, the, at, at somewhat like of, a, of an equal footing. So that's, that's a hard, um, idea to push, but it's a it's an idea that is pushed and works very well. And we've seen examples of the success stories that emerge as a result. Um, for example, my original intention was to focus on data science. Uh, I am still focused on data science, but I am introducing the ele elements of developmental studies from developmental economics into data science, and you know, trying to figure out you know. What's, what's out there? What are the possibilities for research in that field? And it's, it is only possible because of the, you know, the opportunities of transdisciplinary studies here at uh, CGU. And um, the, to, to, to extend the, the, the idea, the, the, the uh, necessity that you, you uh, take a class that is transdisciplinary, that is in some ways totally different from what you're, you know, you're signed up to do, you know, also opens your eyes to other. So I, I am an economic student, I am an information systems student, but I took my transdisciplinary class in psychology, and you know, I'm still trying to figure out what how I'm going to pull that into, you know, some future research that I would do. But it, it opened a new vista of thinking that I was totally, you know, unaware of, and. You don't get there. I don't think you get that that at uh, many other institutions. You don't get the opportunities to go to take a deep dive into so many uh, diverse areas of uh, research and studies as you know, as you as you can here, you know, because of the transdisciplinary nature of CD. Yeah, <clears throat> and I'll, I'll jump in here, um, being in an inner field as well. So. Um, CGU has afforded me the opportunity to essentially take my big robust ideas that I, you know, like and want to research and, 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 and the approach that they take at, at the institution um, has allowed me to kind of create an inner field um, for me and take classes that tie into educational policy, um, political, political psychology and behavior, um, take classes, you know, in American politics that may tie into like education or the media, since the media is my interest as well. So I think CGU was the, is, is the right place for me and for those who may have a little bit more of a broader interest because at the other institutions that I was admitted in, um, you know, it was very polarized to just what their curriculum is and what they want you to research. Um, and the, the, the beauty about CGU is that they nurture your ideas and your creativity and what you want to research. And so um, if you don't, you know, 
you know, the saying closed mouths don't get fed. So if you don't ask for help, like, hey, I have these ideas, how can I marry that together? Um, I remember <laughs> during uh, the COVID, COVID, you know, last year, um, yeah, I was talking with um, someone in student engagement about some of my research interests and ideas and just kind of talking things through. And they had said, well, why don't you look into, you know, interfield or look into um, maybe taking classes in this space and see if it gets approved towards your, um, you know, uh, your degree, the PhD that you want to study. And, and, and I did that. And now, you know, I'm, I'm not only working in the space that I want to in the sense of, of my research, but I'm also doing a lot of, you know, taking a lot of cool classes that, you know, really tie to my own interests and really allow me to uh, take that creative lens that I, I, I may have with my degree and really utilize that. So there is a lot of opportunities to essentially um, take this transdisciplinary approach um, to your, your coursework within your program. Now, some things are, you know, tried and true to what you have to take, but there is a lot of autonomy to, 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 to manage that through. And so that's why ultimately I chose CGU as the right place for me. So for me, my first year was spent at Southwestern Law taking like the typical 1L law school classes. And then this year I joined CGU Drucker to get the MBA. Um, and last month I had a real cool opportunity to participate and compete in a small business school challenge. And what that is, is helping a, a business, small business that was negatively impacted by COVID-19. And so we only have 48 hours to create a business plan, marketing plan, and launch it out. Um, and so I used my experience because what he, his target market was law, lawyers. So I was able to explain to him the different aspects of law, you know, who he should target, and actually um, go towards bar associations instead of going into like typical newspapers and stuff like that. And so I was able to use my understanding of law and then my understanding of marketing and target markets from CGU to have him accomplish his uh, marketing plan. And it was very successful. So that's the way that you can use, you know, two different disciplines and put them together in a real world experience. And on top of that, I'm just gonna say one, one quick thing. If it doesn't get transdisciplinary enough, I presented at a huge education conference, but I'm also presenting now at a huge political science conference. And if that's not transdisciplinary, then I don't know what is. Congrats, Sean, on that. And I do also want to mention as well, I know Francesca brought up doing her program with Southwestern as well as CGU. We also have a joint dog program with um, San Diego State as well as Cal State Long Beach. So if you're interested in working with faculty at different institutions, that's also an option that's available. So for uh, my next question here that you all submitted, so did your undergraduate studies correlate with your graduate studies or was there a complete change in subject matter? Um, I can go ahead and hop in on this one. Um, and I might laugh because <laughs> you'll see. Um, so I um, graduated with my bachelor's in art um, at UCI, I also minored in literary journalism. So I, I did work in the newspaper and I <laughs> was definitely, I, I was a photographer like this. I mean, I still am, but um, that is the background I had. And I um, quickly went through my undergrad program and came straight into CGU mid pandemic. Um, and I actually applied as English. So and I'm obviously not in the English program. Um, I worked with my admissions representative um, a lot and um, my student support specialist and they actually reached out and I applied by priority deadline. I was very on it to definitely be on it. Um, and they're like, oh, actually your statement of purpose is cultural studies. Like this, this isn't really, I don't know if English is a good fit. Um, and I, I did English because I actually wanted museum studies. So that is the museum studies program is why I wanted to come here. Um, that and I can take classes um, with our uh, business, uh, art business courses, um, with our education courses. So I wanted that as, you know, Sean and Teo and the rest of them were saying, I wanted that interdisciplinary, I wanted that transdisciplinary to be able to cater my degree to what I wanted. Um, but I, I needed a, a mother major as I call it. Sorry, my partner's walking in right now. But um, I looked into cultural studies after they're like, your statement of purpose is cultural studies. Um, and, Cause I didn't really know what it was. And um, I thought it was, this is a great fit. This is a perfect fit. Um, 
So I switched over, I changed the title on my statement of purpose and sent it in and two days later I was in. So um, it, yeah, I don't know if that, <laughs> that's definitely a change of degree several times, change of program. Um, but, you know, art and museums and writing is, is what um, kind of has embedded in all of those. So um, the, the titles changed. Um, I think my interests have remained the same. I just needed some guidance, which our um, admissions representatives can provide if you are like me and you were trying to figure it out. Because um, people come into grad school for different reasons. Sometimes it's to focus in and specialize. And sometimes it's to broaden your horizons and be able to take these classes in different areas and um, increase your marketability as, um, and what, what you can do and what your knowledge is in your field. So um, I hope that answers the question. Um, I definitely, there's no judgment for changing degrees here. Um, and I'm happy to, to speak more on it, but yeah, cultural studies has been a great fit. Been here for a year. I have two classes left next semester and I'm out. Um, and lots of museum studies, even though you only need two courses for your concentration. I'd take them all, so there you have it. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll couple my, my background with that. So, um, you know, I did my undergrad in economics um, and did a minor in politics. So the minor kind of touched a little bit, but it was mostly focused on economics. And then I went and got an MBA, which again, doesn't really tie to political science as much. And so, um, and then uh, to couple that, I worked in the entertainment business. So these three things didn't correlate with one another. So um, there is a, um, you know, there's there's no correlation, but there is an acceptance, you know, at, at CG to find your niche and find what you want to research and study. And so um, that's, again, the beauty and the beast of, of joining CGU is that you have so many opportunities to research and study what you'd like. It's just a matter of putting it together and trying to make it make sense for you. Um, I think that's the most important part. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Kate. So how has CGU helped you pursue your passion and vocation in the world? Is there someone in your department that has been a mentor to you or maybe someone across campus or a class? I can go for this one. Um, so the first part of that question is a, that's a big question. Um, in terms of like at least my passions, I will say that I've always had like an interest in podcasting. I had podcasts before and I was able to um, start hosting the podcast for CGU uh, Grad Student Council which has been awesome. That's not something I expected at all. I thought I would get an on-campus job at like the library, like I was a writing tutor in undergrad, something like that. Um, but here I am doing a podcast for my school, which is crazy. So I'm, I'm really thankful for that. So there's definitely outlets for your passions um, in terms of my vocation, still figuring that out. First year of my PhD, so <laughs> still on that journey. Um, but in terms of mentor as well, my, I feel like the person that's been the biggest mentor for me, of course, is my research advisor, um, it's Dr. Hogg. He's just helped me a lot like with figuring out my research ideas and meeting me where I am, if that makes sense. Like, like I mentioned before, coming from undergrad, a PhD is such a huge difference. Um, so it's been really nice to know that it's not just the staff, it's not just other students, but even the professors themselves are very supportive and they meet you where you are. Like, He's really helped me flesh out my ideas and, you know, structure my, my, um, my study and everything. So without his mentorship, I really don't know what I would be doing. Um, and other than him, like I mentioned earlier, there's a peer mentor program. So it's a specific person like for you to be your mentor. And um, my peer mentor has been super helpful. She's great. And we are not in the same field at all, but we have a lot of the same interests and passions and ideas. So it's been really nice having kind of like a student mentor, but also like my mentor who helps me with my research and everything. So those two people have really, really helped um, kind of just pave my, my way through grad school. And like I mentioned before, like you're not going to be at a loss of mentors or people who want to help you. Like there's so many so many resources at CGU. So yeah, those have been the two biggest mentors for me though. All right, so I'll jump in on the subject of mentors first. And um, the fact that we have such small classes here at CGU means that 
pretty much good uh, find a mentor for uh, every class we take. And uh, for me, I have, uh, this is my third year now, and uh, there, there are so many people that I, that I look up to. There are so many people who have been helpful. There are so many people who have you know, given really valuable di direction in both, both my disciplines. So in economics, I worked with, uh, I, I studied with uh, Professor Clicker. It was one of my first classes. And you know, the, the, the ideas he has, the, the knowledge and the, uh, the support is amazing. Uh, you know, I, you know, away from the classroom, we, 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 we had drinks and we had dinner, dinner in this place. So you know, the, the professors are really interested in you as people and interested in finding ways to you know, make you the best version of yourself from your experience of you know, engaging with them. In addition to that, I worked. Uh, I have worked with a couple of professors in, in my CSAT program, done research work uh, in industry, in, in the pharmaceutical industry with uh, uh, Dr. Yan Lee. Um, I have done some research work with uh, Professor Spitzer and uh, Professor Altman. So, and these are professors that you know. First point of con contact is in the classroom. So you take the class with them, you engage with them, they speak to you about what they're doing. What their research interests are and is, you, you know, connect with those research interests interest sometimes. And then, you know, they'll open up their doors to you to talk to you about your, your own interests and how maybe there's some ways you could hit your interests to intersect with theirs. And they'll help you along your journey. I completed my uh, qualifying exam a couple of months ago and now I'm working on my dissertation uh, proposal. And, a lot of you know, the framing of the idea of what would emerge as a dissertation is that, uh, as a result of this you know, wonderful advice, wonderful direction, wonderful support you get that I, I am getting from, from the, you know, the, the, the amazing professors that I have worked with. So for mentors, you will never lack here at CGU because you know every class is an opportunity to gain a, get, get a mentor. And for vocation, I mean, it's, you, you have a portfolio of opportunities here at CGU. I have done so many different things in my very short time here. I have worked with the, the uh, uh, Digital Learning Lab as, as a workshop uh, facilitator because I wanted to facilitate. I had no idea what that was about until I started. Uh, I met with uh, Dr. Shamini from PFF, who you know provided guidance and instruction on how to you know, how to engage with the audience and how to be empathetic when you're you know you're, you're interacting with uh, people you're instructing. And um, you know, I mean, in the library, I met the, the the deputy dean, Dr. Pickle, and you know she was amazing with you know opportunities for for work, giving references for. I mean, you know, so you, you, you keep on finding people that, that, I mean, it's unfortunate that we've had this uh, pandemic and we've been away from campus for a while, but whilst campus was open and campus will be open again soon, I hope, there, were, there are so many uh, interaction or you know, engagement and activities on campus that you know, present an opportunity for you to meet with people people in your faculty, people away from your faculty who are also, you know, uh, members of the staff here at CGU, the opportunities for you to, you know, open up to them, they would open up to you, you talk to them, they learn from you, you learn from them. And, you know, the, the whole, you know, community, you know, is such a, you know, a sustaining one. It's the community that is really committed and interested in the um, progress of the students as students and ha as people. So um, I, I don't know that uh, you'd get, you'd find a better place for finding mentors, no matter what kind of you know, interests you may have in so far as those interests are genuine and those interests have some positive thing or you know, thing to them and, um, you know, it's it's been great for me, and I'm sure that for, for as many of you, as many of us who would have opportunities to come to see you in the future, it'll be it'll be you know amazing for you as well. Thank you, Teo. So, what resources are available for first first generation PhD students or master students? And I don't know if you want to take the lead. Sure, I can start us off. I'm actually the first in my family to pursue a PhD. 
in any subject. So you can imagine the stress I was under getting into one for like, what do I do? Where do I work? Where do I live? Da 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 da. CGU happens to have really good resources. I found a really good place to live for one, which I know is a concern, especially for international students, because you don't know the area. <laughs> so they have a really helpful, the admissions area are very helpful in giving sites and giving reviews and figuring out where to go, what look where, what's located where and all that. And of course, for jobs, they have, of course, their career center and then the faculty is willing to help look for opportunities, especially if they happen to be in a field that you're interested in. They're always looking for research assistance and whatnot. And then, of course, we're in the middle of quite a number of different counties. So if, there, if you find yourself stressing out or anything, there's plenty of places to go to de-stress. And of course, because the classes are pretty relatively small, the ones I've taken at least, your classmates end up becoming pretty good friends of yours, which means more opportunities to connect, figuring out what they like to network, what they like to do, and not only expanding your horizons, but also creating a support network for whenever things get a little too much, which I've always enjoyed because I know I can just go to a friend, go to a professor in order to de-stress and talk about what I need to do. And I'll piggyback off that. Um, I'm also first generation, you know, everything in my family. So there is a lot of pressure that I, I, I definitely agree that Anne brought up. Um, but there are tons of, of services um, available to students and the community itself um, really uh, allows just support. And I think first where I found it most impactful was um, the student, uh, student engagement office for sure. Um, just to learn about things that were happening within the institution. Um, but then also there are um, different, you know, kind of groups or communities within. So they have um, the, Ch the Chicana, Chicano, Latina, Latino Student Affairs. Um, we have the consortium services, which I think are still available. Um, of course, um, the Q uh, Career Resource Centers, um, the Student Life and Diversity and Leadership Offices. Um, and then of course your faculty and other, other individuals you meet on campus for sure to serve as your um, support system, but also as a resource. Um, again, I didn't know anything about what publications were, how to do it until I met someone in, um, you know, uh, student engagement and hear them speak about it. And, you know, the, some something that I, I definitely regret in my undergraduate is I didn't utilize my former university as much. Um, and I didn't utilize a lot of um, you know, the resources that were given. And so now I'm in this space and I'm here and I'm a little bit older, I I'm more mature. I like to think, I would hope I'm mature, but probably not. <laughs> um, I, 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 I like to think that these services are really beneficial for me. And so, you know, if you, if you do come to this institution, you'll find that these services aren't only, they're just available, they're also quality. Um, and you'll find what you need by the, the services. And the institution is really good about connecting people um, through, through the pandemic. I know last year, um, there's, there's tons of groups online, um, particularly in political science. They created a Discord group to just talk with all political science students and um, getting involved within the community, getting involved on, on like uh, the Career Resource Center has um, something called uh, PFLAG Claremont that some, some students were um, a part of. And so again, trying to find some community within, it's relatively easy to find it once you're here and once you start kind of digging in. Yes, I can speak to this too as a first gen, oh, my camera keeps zooming out, that's so weird. Uh, as a first gen grad student, it was definitely really scary looking into grad school and getting ready, especially not even starting with my master's, just jumping into PhD. Like, you just feel like this is like uncharted territory and it can feel like there's just like, you don't know where to go with it. Um, but I honestly, like before I even started at CGU, like even like as soon as I got admitted, I was flooded with resources and so many like emails and kind of like Sean said, like people that you're connected to. And yeah, I think that some of the resources that have helped me the best or the most is, I mean, I, I don't even know like specifically first gen resources, I feel like because we're such a small school and such a tight knit community, it's there's just resources for everyone and they're applicable also to first gen students. 
So I'll just say like, as a first gen student, like I do not at all feel like I don't have a place here or like, I don't know who to reach out to. There's not like these barriers that I could imagine some schools have for first gen students, where it's, you know, if you don't know how to work the system or whatever, you can't find help. I have not felt that way at all. I feel like CDU is like, they go out of their way to help every student, whether you're first gen or whatever situation you're coming from. So yeah, I felt very supported um, for me, like even starting out, we had, a, you know, the admission counselors, like, you know, helping us enroll classes. We had, like, I literally had someone um, from DBOSS enroll me in, in my classes. Like she, we Zoomed and she's like, okay, these are the classes. Like, does that sound good? And I was like, what? Like coming from a state school, you have to wake up at like midnight and you have to get your classes. And if you're a psych student like me, you're probably not going to get half of them because they fill up so quickly. So I was so taken aback. I was like, oh, like, am I going to get the classes? Like, it's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, there's just so many resources. Like there's always somebody there to help you. And I think it's really just a matter of like you looking, like you reaching out or you using those resources. Like at, I'm sure at my last school, there was plenty of resources that I didn't know about just because there's so many people, there's so many things going on that they can't get to every student realistically. If there's like 50,000 students, some students are, are gonna slip through the cracks. Like they're not gonna reach out to every single student, but at CGU, they will be given to you. Like the resources will be given to you. Someone will be in contact with you. You don't have to reach out. It's just a matter of like following up and putting in the effort. So yeah, I'll, I'll just say like as a first gen student, like I mentioned, I don't at all feel like like imposter syndrome anymore, or I feel like I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, I feel like that went away in probably the first like week or month, just because it's such a, it's such a tight knit community. They, they really do help you. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And I know our office, the Office of Student Engagement, we really try to connect students with a lot of resources or you might come in with questions and we like to connect you all to all of the different resources. So it's nice to hear that you all appreciate that. Um, so what is one thing that you feel really made the difference in your application that helped you get accepted into your program? And this might be, you know, working with someone in admissions, maybe you attended some events. Um, I work in the office, so I'll, I can start. <laughs> um, obviously, I don't review applications, so I, I can't speak to what, to what each program is looking for. That would be a question for your admissions representative, because um, we are very departmental. Um, with that. Um, for it was my application, my statement of purpose, I know it was very important, as I mentioned before. Um, and that is also something that your admissions representative can help you with. So that is what I feel CGU has as a smaller institution, um, but a well-connected institution, um, is that we have these individualized opportunities. So my admissions representative knew my application, he knew my name um, enough to tell me that <laughs> you need to be in the other program, girl, get over there. Um, so that, that's something that I think you really need to utilize. We have it here. Um, again, I came from UC Irvine. Um, it is a very, very large institution, even though my programs were very small. Um, so I was always in that small classroom environment. So that wasn't the big transition, but it was definitely, I could feel the, um, individualized support and I don't need to go knocking on random doors for someone to tell me if I'm on the right track or if I, I need help with something I they it's there for me and it's it, you you can utilize it so in the admissions process um you if you've emailed and if I've emailed you back uh, Catherine S. Robbins student worker on the emails um and I've connected you with your admissions representative please reach out to them um we do obviously communicate together, but um, because it's there and it can be so helpful to making your application the strongest it can be. Um, and also finding the correct, the right, not correct, the right program that's fit for your needs. Um, it could be different than what you expected. Um, and so I, that's what I feel like is a CDU difference here um, in working in the office that I do notice and realize is that that network is there. So use it. Um, it is there, but you still need to use it. Um, so definitely reach out. We also have our amazing student support specialists um, at our Office of Student Engagement that are there um, both a little in the admissions process and then also when you are a student, they are there to support you. So 
um, utilize that resource because um, it will make a difference on your application. Yeah, just picking backing off, piggybacking off of that. I can speak English today. <laughs> Come on. Um, the resource center is definitely a plus because as long as you ask, they're pretty much willing to help. Like I've mentioned before, the faculty here is amazing with just getting you the assistance you need as long as you're able to ask. Like what Sean uh, mentioned, I believe it was Sean, I have a bad memory, <laughs> what mentioned earlier, if you don't ask, it's kind of hard for anybody to really help you get what you need. So just asking for assistance and then they are willing to get you in contact with whoever you need rather than you having to go person by person figuring out who's going to help you the most. They will just kind of shove at you actually who's going to help you the best for what you need, whether that's getting in contact with another person in the same department or even just contacting you with professors in the major you're going to get into. So I, I hope that's a little helpful. <laughs> So I can speak to this too with, um, in terms of the application, it's funny because like when I think about my cohort of like all the other students that started right now with me in applied social psych, when I look around and like think of them, we have almost nothing in common. Like I don't think our applications were similar probably at all, except we all really love research and we really love our field and we're, we want to be here. Um, so I feel like like, yeah, when I look around, like there's some have like two masters, some have one, I don't have one at all. We have a student who's in her 50s, I'm like, just out of undergrad. So every student is different. But I think the thing that probably helped all of us with getting accepted is one, like I said, we all have a passion for what we're doing. Um, and we have a clear idea of what we want to do as well in terms of our research. Um, I think that one thing that probably helped with me was saying that like, was my vision for how I want to apply my research to the real world, because that's something I've really noticed with um, CGU, is that it, they don't just care about you learning about your subject and that's it. That's why I feel like the interdisciplinary aspect of CGU is so emphasized, is that they want you to use this for the real world and they want you to apply it in your career and be able to apply it in, in different fields as well, if that's what you choose to do. So I think that having a clear vision of like what I actually want to use my research for and why, even just more broadly, why I want to go to CGU, what I want to use my degree for, I feel like that really helped. Um, and other than that, oh, for me, at least, I actually had um, a professor in undergrad who was a current student at CGU. And I think that helped just knowing someone in the community, not in like a nepotism way, like, oh, she knows her, so let her in. It's, I think that CGU really trusts their students and they think that like, you know, if you have some kind of connection with them, even if you don't have a professor who went to CGU or goes to CGU or anything, if you just make those connections to people, like we've been saying this whole time, it's so close knit that if you make a connection that really, I feel like that really matters. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say about application. Great, thank you. So um, for those of you, which I know for sure, it's Sean and Francesca who are currently employed outside of CGU, how do you balance your studies and your work? Okay, so for me, um, I'm a mother of three children. Um, I work 30, 40 hours a week as a social worker and I'm doing an accelerated MBA program, which means that I take 18 units this semester and then 20 units next semester. So with that, prioritizing is key for me. So of course, anything with my kids come first. And then second, it's all the due dates that come second. And I make sure that I have a list of all the due dates and then I'm hitting them right when they're due, to be honest. You know, before this, I would wanna have stuff done two weeks in advance, but that's not optimal right now. So it's, I'm gonna get it in by the due date. Um, also for me, having a great support network. Um, so that's my family, my husband, my kids that motivate me my friends and my coworkers, because there's some times where I have two classes during the day, so I'm taking it during lunch. So if anything happens on my caseload, they'll cover for me, and that really helps me to focus in class. And then the third thing that I do is set realistic expectations. Like I said, it's not going to get done two weeks in advance, but it'll be done by the due date. And then giving myself grace. So if I have to, you know, do self-care or I have to stop reading for the night and go to sleep, I'm going to do it. But it's really about prioritizing and finding that balance that works for yourself. Yeah, um, the most important thing that I've learned the last year is to set boundaries um, with yourself and with others. Um, I think you need to make sure that you are um, taking the time for your studies, taking the time for your like mental health check-in, um, 
but also make sure that you're, you know, flourishing in your classes and flourishing in your jobs. Um, so that's setting boundaries. So sometimes the extra weekend going out isn't going to cut it, right? Um, I also think what is impactful is the community. So having people at CGU who can help, you know, creatively think for you in the sense of like, hey, how do you manage your day? And I, you know, I learned that like, oh, sticky notes help me out of a checklist. I'm like, okay, cool. Let me try that. So getting some ideas on like how you manage your calendar, how you manage your days um, are really important for me personally, how I manage my, my studies is essentially, um, <clears throat> you know, I tied it, I weave it into my day and, you know, not everyone's situation is going to be the same. However, I weave it into my work day. So I wake up earlier to start work early and then kind of dismiss myself earlier from work. Um, I let my boss know, hey, I'm in this PhD program. It's a full-time program. I'm in it full-time. And so um, where can I pull from, you know, work to make sure I'm focusing on my day? And everyone's situation is different, but, um, you know, I, I, I start by open communication with those around me. Um, and uh, then I just kind of maneuver my, my classes. I take the syllabus. I have sticky notes and then I mark down important dates for papers, for um, uh, seminar uh, discussions, weekly uh, weekly discussions, projects. Um, and, and listen, you know, uh, some of the classes you're going to have large papers to do and a lot of research. And so that does take time. So finding the time to make sure that you are essentially creating um, the space for yourself to get this done without being overly stressed because it's very easy to get stressed um, if you're not following a, a pattern or a routine. So again, following a routine is really important, um, following a pattern and making sure that you communicate with your supervisor or your, uh, your professors as well. You know, CGU is an open community. They are really helpful and they are, they are understanding of our student population. And so um, if you kind of have that conversation with your professor from the, from the beginning, you're able to essentially kind of create um, that space and say, hey, you know, I, I know discussions are due Monday. Is there a way that maybe I could submit them Tuesdays? I mean, it's not always going to be a yes, but it doesn't hurt to ask, uh, especially again, if you're manu maneuvering through a lot of things like, you know, Francesca mentioned, you know, kids and, and, and married and jobs, it's not easy. And um, we have a lot of projects to do and a lot of research to conduct. And so just time managing yourself is really important and setting that boundary to maybe cut some things while you're in grad school. Thank you both so much. I'm all so inspiring. I feel like I have no excuses. I should just apply to grad school. If you all can do it, I, I can do it. And Sean, I love post-it notes. I have them all over too. So I really like that. Um, so how has CGU challenged you academically? Teo, you want to take the lead on this one? Sure, I can do that. So um, it's it's been challenging, I'll be honest, but it's also been very rewarding. Now, one of the things that, that has helped me academically here at CGU is the idea of um, collaborating with, um, with uh, classmates and peers. Um, the, the curriculum is rigorous. The content is very expansive. You do a lot of reading. Um, I remember my first, seminar, first uh, doctoral seminar class, uh, we were doing, I think, about three papers a week. You know, I felt that was you know, you know, out of this world, but when you quickly fall into the rhythm of working with others and you know sharing ideas you you, you feel the load the, the load ease up you know tremendously so um, the, the that community approach to everything that you know goes on here at cgu is also helpful with the um, academic program uh, you are able to engage with your course mates you're able to engage with your professors you're able to engage with your professors outside of the classroom and so you, you have an extension of the classroom and experience away from the classroom through you know, various channels of engagement you can meet with them in person you could um, engage with them via zoom uh, we have uh, teaching assist assistants who also have you know uh, their own sessions in addition to the class sessions augment learning and clarify issues so it's a lot of content it's a lot of time commitment but i think the general idea is that uh, especially for the for, for the doctoral programs that you know it's just skating through is not the ideal you, you could actually really excel at what you do and excelling would mean that you know you know tapping into all the resources the resources from the professors, resources from your peers, 
resources from the uh, student uh, teaching assistants to, to ensure that you know you 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 come out really, really well grounded and um i think that's 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 been my story that's been my journey so far and i have enjoyed it i've enjoyed the vigor i've enjoyed the challenge and i i feel that the uh, the environment encourages you to do well at what you do to the point that uh at the end of the journey you you uh you feel a sense of satisfaction that you've done your very best and your best has been good enough so yeah Um, I can jump in on this one. And yes, your best is always good enough. All you can do is your best. That's what I tell myself every time I turn in a paper. I did my best and that's all I can do. So, and it always worked out great. Um, yeah, I mean, I my program, um, we do have like our core cultural studies courses, our research methods and um, our, I'm gonna be in a, a writing workshop uh, for my my master's project next semester, um, which <laughs> I need to figure out. Um, but <laughs> the um, beyond those classes, like I can really take what I want. So I've actually taken an education course. I'm in art business course right now. Um, so choosing and welding those together and making them fit for me, I guess, is a challenge, though it's a fun challenge. Um, also, a lot of my projects in my museum studies courses, especially, um, are really relevant to my work and building my portfolio and things that I can use in a job interview. Um, so I, I will say I try to take when I say practical, it means like physically like that I'm learning a skill, not that it's, you know, every, everyone's everyone's practicality is different for what they what they're work, working on, but I like to learn skills and I like to build um, tangible things that I can use for my field because it is museum studies. So um, that is definitely it's 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 fun and it's it's effort. So I do want it to be good. Um, so I I don't as far as challenge academically, it's I don't think it's a struggle for that. But I think that it's definitely something I want to be putting my best into. So because those those are my projects and there's something I care about, but they are fun. Um, and then I wanted to. Oh yeah, um, interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary in my ed program, I'm actually working on co-authoring a paper with my education professors. So that is definitely a different type of challenge because I, submitting to academic journals is, 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 an, is an interesting experience. It's definitely helpful to have a professor to help navigate that space, especially, I mean, this is my master's. So it's my first time doing that um, I, and learning to write like an academic, um, I definitely feel like I still write like a journalist, um, though that has perks. Um, learning different, I mean, it's, it's really a toolkit that you're building so that um, learning those skills and reaching out to my professors to try to build that um, is, is a challenge, but it's a, it's a good one. Um, and it's, it's helpful and it's helpful to build you um, as an academic and you as a professional. Um, as you work towards whatever goals you have, um, because I want more tangible things that those are the types of projects I'm working on. Um, there's a heavy reading load, I will mention. I know Teo, Teo mentioned um, it's humanities for me. Um, we got a lot of readings in our, our core courses, especially. Um, and so, I mean, that that just is what it is. You just got to power through um, and, and learn to pull the key stuff out. So that's when it is doubled from my undergrad reading loads for some of my classes. So that's, that's, I guess, was a challenge transitioning, though I think you get better the more courses you take, the further you get into your program. It Just like your undergrad, if you took a freshman course your senior year, which I did, um, it feels different because you have, you have that practice and you're building those skills as an academic. So um, those are my, my two cents. Don't worry, Kate, you're not the only one trying to figure out the topic for their dissertation equivalent. I'm in my third year and I'm still trying to narrow it down here. <laughs> There's just so many topics, I don't know which one. But as for the challenge, yeah, I can definitely say my head's hurt a couple of nights in a row based on certain problems and whatnot. I'm in mathematics, it's gonna hurt my head. But yeah, I'm gonna get frustrated yet. Sometimes I feel like I'm gonna get lost, but like Kate said, as long as you try your best, that's all you, can really do and you're trying your best and the professors are going to realize that they 
as long as you're willing to learn and as long as you're willing to put in the work, that's all they kind of want. And they are fully willing to help you go along that route because the end goal for the professors that I've met is to have you learn and better improve yourself, which is honestly what I think graduate school is supposed to do. So yeah, it's challenging, but it's a good type of challenging. It's a good type of frustration because once you finally understand what the heck you're looking at, it's the most satisfying feeling ever. My department and my classmates actually kind of get loud when we fi finally figure out that one solution to the problem we're working on. So yeah, it's a good challenge and it's one I've enjoyed despite all the headaches. <laughs> so. Thank you. Thank you all for answering that. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Sean Buchanan, the Assistant Director of Admissions, because I see there's a couple of questions in the Q&A and also in the chat. So he'll be picking some of those questions for you all to answer. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. So there's some few there's a few open ended questions that have been left in the Q&A. And thanks for our attendees who have been submitting questions via the Q&A. We'll get to some of these right now. So I wanted to start with this one here. Sean mentioned that he had presented at a conference. So for anyone else who has also presented or is maybe going to present at conferences soon, how did you find out about these opportunities? Did you find them on your own? Was this something faculty or maybe some other fellow students recommended to you? Um, so we could start there and then also in terms of funding for that conference, is that something you sought out here at CGU or applied to grants elsewhere? How did you navigate that space? Um, yeah, actually, I learned a really cool trick from someone at CGU to find um, proposals um, and they're going to spin in their seat if they watch this. Uh, basically, all you have to do is Google call for proposals in your respective field. So call for proposals in political science, call for proposals in, in education, but also um, ask your advisors and um, you know, other students where they think some of the best uh, you know, associations are good to publish and present at because um, listen, at the end of the day, it's gonna matter where, what, what journals you do it at and what, what um, you know, if you're going for, I mean, at least for me, I'm trying to go, you know, post PhD into tenure track. So that's going to matter, right? Um, publishing and, and doing conferences is important. So um, I have to look and ask professors, hey, which which conferences do you like? Or which ones have you uh, submitted journal articles to? Or uh, which publications are, are your favorite? Um, and um, that's kind of how I found it. So I didn't necessarily find it on my own. Someone here at CGU helped me. Because um, again, I didn't really know the landscape. I didn't know how to navigate it very well. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, the resources are there. So I think even in um, preparing future faculty, they, they teach you how to write abstracts and proposals. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm almost certain they do. The Center for Writing and Rhetoric will totally help you. Um, and uh, those are the resources that you can utilize. And then in terms of funding, so I'm presenting next year at a conference in Texas, and I am requesting funding from the department. Now, it, it, it varies, to be honest, and I don't want to promise or overstate or understate something, but um, there, I believe there are some grants uh, available to students who do uh, travel for conferences and or presenting some of their works. Um, that's department specific. Um, so you would have to, um, and if anyone has perspective on it, because um, this is fresh for me, uh, essentially I just had I asked my department head and, and told my advisor hey I'm presenting at this conference these dates you know what type of funding can I receive for um the uh the stay and the travel and all that I know for sure CGU is really good about um you know funding um you know entryway into um conferences and publications so if you have a hard time you know getting into those places they will you know just reach out and they want to help you get to that those places so they will certainly help you out but um CGU's has opportunities and there's a lot of um through the graduate student council there's a lot of opportunities to um get funding th there as well even as a delegate myself for triple spe um i even asked a question to the president said hey um i'm i'm a delegate can i still apply for this but it's open to everyone and anyone uh, at CGU. So there are plenty of opportunities, just a matter of finding them and asking um, other students who may have published and asking um, your faculty and your, your um, student engagement office even. Uh, 
I saw another really interesting question here posed in the Q&A that I'd like some of our students to speak on. So we have someone here who graduated with their master's in 2014, and they're hoping to return to school and seek out their PhD. So for any of you who have maybe taken breaks or gaps in your education, or maybe you're now coming back for a PhD, how did you approach that return? And what are some helpful tips you could share with this person on how to navigate a return to education? I think I can take that. I mean, I got my first master's in 2008. And I started my uh, doctoral degree 11 years after. So, I mean, when you're ready, you're ready. And if you're ready to go back, you know when you're ready. So when I was ready to go back, come back to school, I applied. And um, as far as, you know, getting back into the groove of academic, academics, I, I think it's also a mindset thing. There, there's no, I mean, for, for anyone who's doing a PhD, no matter, you know, no matter if you just finished your master's a year before, or 10 years ago, it's a, it's a new experience. You've never done it before. So you would all, you would have the same kind of problems everybody else would have. It's, you're gonna be thrown into seminar workshops that uh, are you know, strange. The, the process of um, interaction is totally different. The content is a lot more expansive. So you would have to contend with that. And it will be a process. It will take a process for you to get into the groove of doing that. So I really don't think it matters that it's been so long. I mean, I have in my class, in my PhD cohort, you know, someone who, who got her, I believe her master's from CGU in the year 2000. And now she's here for a PhD and that, that hasn't stopped her. So I don't, think, I, think, I don't think six or seven years should stop you. Um, I'll jump in. Uh, same for me. It's, you know, from bachelor's to master's was quite a significant amount of years. Um, and now to PhD, I kind of felt right through it. Um, uh, kind of like Teo said, um, you're, you're never really prepared because the experience is brand new anyways, no matter if you went straight from, you know, your bachelor's degree to PhD or bachelor's degree with a master's and to, to, to PhD or just strictly a master's degree. So, the experience is going to be new as as it is. It's just a matter of how you're going to manage your time um, and how you're going to you know approach um, your 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 research, your thesis, your dissertation, your interests. Um, and my advice is ask questions um, because what you don't know is what you don't know. So if you don't if you don't know the answers, just ask. Um, like I kind of mentioned earlier my biggest regret in undergrad was I didn't utilize a lot of the services and resources that were granted to me as a student. So, um, you know, ask questions and, 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 you know, once you ask those questions, you'll get the answers and then you'll start to build and learn. And, and that's when you'll really feel confident about, um, you know, after your first semester, your second semester, your third, and you'll kind of find your groove eventually. And then the next thing you know, you're done. So um, it'll, it'll be, it'll be relatively um, easy to navigate the landscape. Once you find, um, the answers to your questions and once you feel confident and confidence is just going to come from within but also support so sean and teo i know you spoke a little bit about interfield degrees and transdisciplinary studies and the things you're involved with here at cgu but we did get a question in the q a regarding interfield degrees and maybe what fields are eligible to combine so perhaps you could remind our audience what fields you've combined and what interfield degrees you're currently working on yeah, um, so I am in political science in the PhD in political science, and I'm working with uh, education and ed policy. So I've combined political science and education into one to really focus on educational policy. Um, but uh, coupling that, like we talked about earlier, being, CG being, you know, transdisciplinary, um, my main focus is definitely American politics, but I found um, how to marry American politics, the media, and education policy all into one. Um, and I know that within DPE or Department of Politics and Economics, there is an inner field of uh, political science and economics. There is an inner field, I believe, of economics and international relations. Um, so it's just a matter of connecting with your advisor and talking those things through to make sure that they are synonymous, at least in terms of coursework, or if they're not, then what's your program timeline going to look like? What classes do you need to fill for one department division, and then what 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 uh, what uh, uh, qual qualifications are needed for one? You know, particularly um, at the PhD level, especially you have something called qualifying exams, um, and what is that going to look like when you are doing an interfield? Um, so that's with for you to work with both the de departments, 
um, to say, okay, I'm gonna take one qualifying exam here and then one qualifying exam here, and then maybe a third alternative that will kind of help it mesh it all together. So um, those variables are something you also need to consider as well when you do an interfield is what your qualifying exams will look like as well. Yeah, I think uh, Sean has answered it really well. So um, I, I am in uh, the Department of Politics and Economics and also in the Center for Information Systems and Technology. So diff two different schools. Um, so uh, my, my program was had to be specially crafted and that's the value of CGU. The coordinators, the program coordinators would sit together and uh, design a, you know, chart a course for you that fulfills the requirements for both the degrees in your interfield or in your dual degree program and what classes you need to take to fulfill the requirements for completing this degree and you know the classes you need to take uh, for the other degree what classes overlap what, what and where there are overlaps what classes could be waived and so on and so forth so that will be specifically crafted to your needs and i believe that's open for pretty much any kind of uh, inter uh, dual degree um, um, requirements or solutions that, that any student may want. It's, it's all, all you, you need to do is to sit down with the program coordinators and, the advi and your advisors to agree on what the mix of courses would look like. And if you're pursuing uh, the degree up to PhD level for both, as Sean has, Sean has said, you would also may be required to take, you know, Certain bit uh, a variation in the in the qualifying exams you take. So if the usual process for um, a straight line degree is to take two qualifying exams for your for your interfield. You may be required to take an extra qualifying exam to fulfill the requirement. So the 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 um, trajectory for completion will be unique to the interfield or draw degree program that you are holding. But CGU is willing to help you to define or create that trajectory. Thanks very much. There was another question in the chat regarding housing. So for any of my fellow panelists here who have lived in Oasis or maybe Claremont Collegiate Apartments, or maybe they found some roommates, how did you approach the housing question when coming to CGU? And if you didn't get into housing, maybe you're commuting, maybe you could just speak on your experience there a little bit as well. Um, I'm commuting from Brea. Um, I don't live in student housing, though their websites, you go there to find out about those. Um, there's those two um, that are student housing, um, Claremont Collegiate Apartments and Oasis. Um, yeah, I, I drive. It is it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if anyone else lives in student housing, but to avoid an awkward pause. I, I don't live in student housing, but I do know that the, uh, the school website has um, offerings for um, accommodation in, within the area. So in Pomona, Upland, Montclair, uh, uh, I think even as far as Laverne, there are postings for apartments, rooms to let that uh, available. And if you jump onto the site, I also think that I, I, I do know that there is a an official Facebook page for CGU accommodation. If you join that page, uh, Facebook group, or check the, the website, you would see a list of you know possibilities around the campus area, Claremont, and you know the uh, you know, nearby cities uh, within short commute. That uh, pop, pop, you probably will get a, a, li a little better um, price uh, uh, options from those. Uh, opportunities and maybe the uh, collegiate apartments. But of course, there's also the collegiate apartments where it's available, you could also involve that. So I've thought of a question that I want to pose to everyone here in the panel really quickly. I know some of us are still participating in virtual courses as we transition out of this pandemic, though some of us may be involved in in-person courses here in CGU. What's your favorite spot on campus to relax, study, maybe do some thoughtful reflection, or even we'll limit it outside of CGU if you're you know, interested in going over to Scripps or Pomona or any of the other Claremont colleges. Where do you find yourself most often when you're here in uh, CGU, when you're not in class anyway? I mean, that's, 
Oh. You, you go ahead. I was going to say, I, every time I've gone to campus, I've always gradu uh, gravitated towards um, the, the Pomona, uh, Pomona College's lawn where the music uh, center is. It's just beautiful. It looks very East Coast. It's just awesome. And I just like walking around there. Um, I've done some good walks around the campus. So that's probably my favorite. Scripps is gorgeous. Um, it's like the secret garden over there. It's like Hogwarts. I love Scripps. Um, but at risk of ruining where I eat lunch uh, at work, um, there's this table in Drucker that's like, you go up these stairs and it's like so hidden and no one's there. And I listen to my audiobook and nobody talks to me. <laughs> and I love it. So, I mean, don't find me there, but find me there. Um, and then also, uh, Sean, you might be able to help me. I can't remember the name of the courtyard, but it's um, where we did the um, in and out truck for the orientation. Um, that There's these really nice tables over there um, that I, I remember the courtyard. Oh, but it's cute. And I like it there. And there's pretty trees that bloom. Um, Perk of Claremont, there's like trees blooming all times of year because they're all different seasons and they're beautiful and there's different colors. So right now it's yellow. <laughs> yeah, I think you're talking about the Decombs quad right there in between student yeah. service and software. Yeah, that's a lovely little spot there too. Sean mentioned that that area outside of Pomona uh, where the music center is, is very East Coast. That is definitely true. Uh, if you've ever watched the, the TV show Gilmore Girls, they posed Pomona as Yale at least once for that show. So it definitely does have an East Coast look to it. Anyone else favorite spots on campus? I'm actually in mine. So it's just right outside the Math North building for my department. It's just the essential backyard. And right across the street is actually kind of the location of some of the dorms for campus, which are right next to a botanical garden which is pretty fun to visit, so. <laughs> Transitioning off of campus, maybe, for those of you who ventured out into the Claremont Village, favorite eateries, favorite spots to get coffee, anything that some of our prospective students might need to know if they're gonna visit us here in Claremont? Uh, in the village, there's Burton Rocky's ice cream which is good, or Dr. Grubbs if you're, uh, if you want something like healthy and tasty. Um, I like Walters has some good choices in a nice outdoor indoor courtyard. Um, revved up, I, there's this lavender matcha, so good. It's very, very good. Um, and there's a, actually a really good Thai food place in the village. I can't remember the name, but um, it's over kind of by Eureka, which is also good. Good fight. Bo Boa Thai. It's my yes. favorite one. Yes, so good. Ooh. I think my favorite place is Tax 2 It's a Mediterranean, and I just re and I didn't realize they had an opening over here. Yeah, Boa Thai is great. And of course, 21 Choices as well. And of course, on campus, you have Hegel's Burger. I finally got coffee there for the first time. I'm going to graduate in May, so. <laughs> I loved their breakfast burritos when they were open. <laughs> they have breakfast options again. I was just there. So we're nearing the end of our session here. We've got maybe about 10 or so minutes before we close out. So I know we've transitioned to these fun questions, favorite spots on campus, you know, favorite spots to eat or get around. But uh, I think there's one other thing that's always a pertinent question to ask our current students that maybe uh, some, uh, we kind of alluded to with the application materials earlier, but I'd like to hear some thoughts here as well. What is one thing that you would tell past yourself before starting grad school that you've learned as part of your graduate school experience here at CGU? And you can take a moment to think on that. That's not exactly an easy question. Um, I can go over this one. Um, I think like I already knew grad school was gonna be really difficult going in, of course, but I think I would tell myself it's gonna be harder than you thought even, but it's gonna be better than you thought too. Cause I thought, I think like I was expecting it to be hard and I was expecting it to be 
kind of like a cold atmosphere and everyone's really serious. And I don't know, like, that's just like what I was thinking of it as. Um, it ended up being way harder than I had even expected, more reading than I could ever comprehend. Um, but it's also been the like, even in my just one semester here, it's been such a good experience. I've made such good friends. And the other thing is like most people are in somewhat the same boat as you. Like if you're totally struggling, you're not the only one, absolutely. If not everyone is struggling, at least someone else is struggling in that class or with that assignment. So if you just talk, if you just like open up, like everybody's on the same page. So, cause I think I was going in thinking I wasn't gonna know anything, but you know more than you think you do. It's gonna be really hard, but it's worth it. So that's what I would tell myself. Um, I definitely agree with that. Um, I. I came straight out of undergrad, uh, 21 years old, and didn't know anything. <laughs> um, just kidding, I do know stuff. But it, the imposter syndrome, like everyone has struggled, I think at some point with that, and that you do bring something to the table. Um, I think um, people came in with various levels of work experience, various levels of ac in their academic journeys. Um, and it is just, there's so much, so many people with different backgrounds that it's fine that you're fine and everybody's different and that's great because you get to hear different experiences so I think that I wish I worried less um honestly um, my advisor is really awesome and he definitely um takes that level of anxiety down um that uh, for my experience um that was there so if you're someone who struggles with um, anxiety or worry over starting a grad school journey, um, you're not alone. And that students really like, you can make friends even in a virtual environment and you say, oh, hey, wow, this paper's really, it's, it's getting to me. They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, me too. Um, it, we're here to support each other. So I think I wish I worried less. I think that's what I would tell myself, but you're fine. Just be yourself and you know things and show up to class and do your reading and you'll be fine. Um, oh, Teo, you want to go? You go first. I was just going to say, um, be open-minded. Um, truthfully, it's a new experience and you're not going to necessarily know how to navigate everything at once. Um, taking it from someone who needs to know everything right away and be an expert already. Uh, I, I, I had analysis paralysis, um, in the beginning and honestly i just needed to be open-minded and that's really what you have to do and be open-minded listen to your peers your your mentors faculty um and take advice but have your hope your own, have your own opinion and voice but it's good to be open-minded as well certainly i was gonna say pretty much what uh, sean just said but you know to use my own words it will be you know, patience and pace yourself you, know, you you have to learn to be patient. It can't get overwhelming. Uh, don't let it get to you. It's a lot of work. It's going to be a lot. It's not easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park. You will have to put in the work. Sometimes you feel you're putting putting in your best effort and it's still not enough. You need to step back, relax. It'll be okay. You will do okay if you just keep you know doing what you do as well as you can do it. So be patient and you know, pace yourself. I think for me, it's just believing in yourself. I mean, you work so hard to do the application. You take the exam. I took the LSAT, which is really difficult, you know, and you get in. So enjoy that moment, you know, believe in yourself, do the work and just know that you made it here. So just do it and don't second guess yourself. So I would really have wished I knew that sooner than later. For me, it'd be like, again, with being open as Sean and Timotea have mentioned, be willing to also just make as many friends as you'd like, because it's like, I'm a tiny hermit. I like to stay in my room. They're the ones that make me socialize, but it's been great for de-stressing because it's graduate school. It's going to be stressful. Goodness gracious. <laughs> so be willing to do a bunch of things that you weren't capable of doing before. Be open to having you know, making friends with not only the students, your fellow classmates, but also the staff themselves, because some of them are pretty darn interesting. And just 
also be sure to have fun because it's like, yeah, you're here to study, but if you don't have fun as well, you're going to burn out way faster than you ever wanted to. Thanks so much, everyone, for those words of encouragement. There's definitely a lot when thinking about approaching graduate school, and I think you've provided some really good advice and some good points to our fellow prospective students. So I wanted to thank all of our students for joining us from each of our programs. Thank you so much for taking time to share your experience, talk a little bit about what it means to be a student here at CGU and provide those words of encouragement. I also wanted to thank our student support specialist, Elizabeth Rubio, who moderated our session and asked these wonderful, brilliant questions. Thank you to our audience. Thank you so much for joining for our student experience panel. We hope to see you at our other events for, for follow-up and house. If you're local, we would have, we'd love to see you tomorrow, Saturday for our in-person programming. We've dropped some links in the chat so you can take a look at our faculty members and events we'll be having here tomorrow on Saturday. But from all of us here at Claremont Graduate University, my co-chair Andrea Montoya, thank you so much for joining us and making this student experience panel so special. We hope to see you soon, and you can always feel free to reach out to us at admissions at cgu.edu for any questions you have about the application or admissions process. So thanks again, everyone. Have a wonderful day, morning, evening, wherever you are. Take care of yourselves and stay healthy. Bye everyone. Thank you again for joining and participating. Thank you, Sean. Thank you all again for joining us for our student experience panel. Uh, if you have any questions still about programming for tomorrow, you feel free to drop it in the chat or use the Q&A box and we can answer that question. Otherwise, um, this does conclude our virtual programming for our fall open house event. Thank you all again for joining us. If there aren't any questions, we are gonna be closing this room right now. We do appreciate you spending your morning or afternoon with us, depending on where you're joining us from. If you do have any questions, you can reach us at admissions at cgu.edu and we're more than happy to help. If you are local, we hope we get to see you tomorrow. Um, I do see a question here. So tomorrow will not be virtual. Tomorrow is gonna be held on campus. I'm not sure I can double check if you are registered. I can register you for the session if you are local, but tomorrow is going to be on Claremont Graduate University's campus for our faculty panels, uh, statement of purpose workshop, and then a resource fair. Okay, everyone, thank you again for joining us. If you do have questions, please just email us at admissions at cgu.edu. We are gonna be closing this session, but we do appreciate you spending your time with us and we hope you enjoyed our virtual programming over the last two days. Thank you all.